49ers defense is set to get even better, even more dominant, even more scary because Javon the Barbarian Kinlaw is about to return. We're going to talk about it right here on the Wayne Breezy Show. I'm gold blooded. I got the Niners on my back, you know. And yeah. Joe passing me. Breezy this, back. Breezy that. Lord. Ain't nobody working like Breezy, and that's a fact. Over motivated is an understatement. Gold blooded to the core, got your squad hating. Breezy make it look easy. Breezy on everything like 05067 Wheezy. This is not a game. Yeah, we faithful in every way. And even though we on the East Coast, very loyal to the Bay. Heavy red and gold every day. And if you really a Niner fan, I know you can relate. Applying pressure with this content like smaller bear. We not accepting no slander by trace, so beware. I stay in exclusively Niner hats. And I always tell the truth, this exclusively Niner facts. Breezy this, breezy that. They know I'm gold blooded. I got the Niners on my back, you know. Yeah. Breezy this. What's going on? Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas and all that good stuff. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Wayne Breezy, man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to the Wayne Breezy Show. We got to start the show off with the round of applause to everybody that's out there, you know, just chilling, chilling. You know? Oh, we got a lot of stuff we're going to get to today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Javon Kinlaw. Got some NFL stuff we want to talk about. A uh, little NFL news. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Franco Harris. I have a story about Franco Harris, so it's really cool. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Some of you may know. Some of you that are new to the stream may not know, so I'm going to share that story. Uh, and then we're going to talk, uh, you know, we're going to do the Kahoot Challenge. We've got the Kahoot Challenge today. Today we're going to be giving away three things. So first and second, third place winners will win something on today. It's the holiday season. And it's, you know, I feel good. I, I want to give some stuff away. All right. So let, let's do that. Um, let me just type this in here. Man, can't wait to share this story. It's going to be pretty cool. All right. So let's talk about, uh, let's get, let, actually, let me welcome everybody to the show. All right. So shout out to all, every, I got to start the show off. When you guys are members, you get that like cool, super, extra shout out so if you become a member of the channel i gotta shout you out i gotta i gotta put you up there and not only do we have a member we start to show off with a contribution so miss jacqueline knox started to show off she says hey niner family 11 and 4 is coming right up i like that i like to start the show off uh which is letting everybody know if you're not a if you're not a 49er faithful and you're just watching the stream or whatever 11 and 4 is coming up and she's talking about her 49ers, and the 49ers are looking good. And they're gonna they're gonna be even better because they got some key pieces uh about to set to return to this team. So shout out to Jacqueline. Thank you for the contribution. Uh Miss Debbie's in the building. She says, Good morning, Wayne. Hey, faithful. I hope everyone is doing well this morning. Please remember to hit that like for Wayne. It helps the channel. Appreciate you. My brother 49er Jeff. Good morning to everybody in the chat. You know what I'm saying? He's just getting his good morning shout outs on. Christy, 1687 is in the building. Good morning, everyone. Christy Marie's in the building. My man, Coach Cruz, Demarcus, everybody else. I see you guys out there. Dion, I see you. David Banner is in here. What's good? Uh, you know what? You got a question. Uh, please explain to people what's a trap game. All right. You know what? Let's start the show off with a question. Usually I don't do this. Make sure you guys do that and hit that like button. Shout out to Miss Debbie for putting that out there. And, and let's do that. Let's hit that like button. And here you go, David. This one's for you. So a trap game is one of those games where, you know, it can kind of put the 49ers in a pickle. You know, in every season, there's a trap game. Sometimes there's more than one. Sometimes there's two. And they usually happen 
around this time of the season. Look, the 49ers are set to be the third uh, the third seed, right? They're already set in the third seed. Uh, clearly, they won the NFC West already. And they're about to play a team that's fighting to keep their playoff hopes alive in the Washington Commanders. And so, if the, and, and look, the 49ers lost. Well, I ain't going to give you the answers to some of these things on the question. But 49ers, every season, run into a team that's looking to beat them and it kind of puts them in a pickle. Even go back to you remember the 2019 season? Go back to the 2019 season. Remember when we played Atlanta? That was a trap game. Now I, I we we finished the season 13 and 3. Okay. That was a trap game. Coach Cruz, uh, but but here's the thing: like we we still found a way to we we had to win out, like we still had to beat Seattle, we had to do some things to to keep our stuff, you know. A float. Coach Cruz says the trap game was week one. I felt like the trap game was like week seven in Atlanta. I felt like week one wasn't the trap game, but you can kind of pick which game you feel like was going to kind of set the 49ers up to have to do something that they, you know, they should have won these games, right? Like they should have beat the Bears. They should have beat if the Falcons. They should have beat the Broncos. I mean, those are teams that can barely beat other teams. Uh, so whatever game you feel is that trap game that's going to kind of put the 49ers in a pickle to where they got to kind of like win out to get in, that's a trap game. Uh, the 49ers clinched the division, so they're automatically in the playoffs. So you might not feel there's any more trap game set to the season, but some people may feel like this particular game, if the Washington uh, Commanders win this game, this may put the 49ers in a lower uh, seating. And so trap game, you get what I'm saying? So it all depends on uh, what, you, what you think. Like Cowboy Angel says, first place in the NFC West. Let's F and go. Yeah, man, I'm with you. What's going on, Dion? I see you guys out there. So uh, uh, Jerome says the last game was a trap game. Yeah, I mean, like the Miami game could have been a trap. Like even though that's not even a, a team we, that's in our division, we you know, we just couldn't lose. Uh, if we would have lost to Seattle, it would have been a problem because not we don't clinch the West yet. You know what I'm saying? And you keep Seattle afloat. So it all depends on how you look at it. And that's why I feel like uh, <laughs> KD23, you ain't right, bro. I ain't. You, you want Ken Lowe to come out here and cuss you out on the show? That's what you want? Uh, that That's kind of messed up. Uh, I'm not even going to read that, but I, I got to put it back up there for those that, you know, can read. Here it is. And there it is. And there it goes. All right. So it depends on what you feel like uh, is a trap game. Um and Tommy says no division games or trap games. Yeah, you want to win your division. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of agree with Tommy on this joint. But listen, three seed is locked uh, as of as of now. The question is, we want to move up. So it's not about moving down Eddie to the four seed or whatever. Is Can we continue to move up? You know, I might have said move down. My bad. Uh, it's all about moving up. Like, we want to be the two. We want to be the one. And so, uh, yeah, the market says we can't go lower than the third seed. Yeah, we're, we're locked in at the three seed. So this could be one of those games that can kind of like not push us down, but not elevate us up. So some people might feel like this is a trap game. Look, don't lose to any other teams for the rest of the season. You ain't got to worry about traps. Feel me? That's how I look at it. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to everybody out there, man. I, I truly appreciate the love, the support that you guys have been given the rebranding the restarting of the channel was crazy uh but we're back to that we're back to monetization we're back to you know all the shows we're back to just everything and i owe it all to you so round of applause to everybody out there again all right so let's let's get to uh you guys heard like the nfl news um uh former uh, Steelers running back, uh, Franco Harris, passed away uh, this morning. I believe that's when I got the news. Uh, I didn't I didn't necessarily read the article or anything. I just saw the headline. And I'm just like, oh, man. So he, he, he died at the age of 72. Uh, you know, and, 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 and the crazy thing is it was like the 50th year of the Immaculate Reception this year. So they were going to honor him and retire his number. Like, and, and and from what I, I did read something, so let me not lie and say I didn't read. Um, I read that he spoke to Tomlin, what's today? Yesterday. Like, they spoke. Like, they spoke on Tuesday. 
And they were talking about that. And Tomlin was telling the story how he was sitting in the stands. He was eight years old. Man. You know, so uh, we definitely want to send our love and our condolences to the family, to the Harris family. And all of those, the Steelers family, everybody that were closely, um, you know, knit to Franco Harris. Um, and yeah, it's very, very sad, very sad to lose anybody. Uh, and, uh, I don't take death too well, so don't mind me, but it's just very sad. Um, but we're definitely praying for his family, uh, 100%, especially right here on the Wayne Breezy show. I know the nitty gritty Niner family. I know everybody out there is the same way, but a cool story. So I was, I was doing a wedding and I can't remember. I, I feel like it was a wedding in New York. I'm always doing a wedding. So if you guys want to know what I do outside of when I was teaching what I used to do to like kind of like supplement because you don't make any money teaching so just want to put that out there right uh and it's not about the money when you teach it's more you know it's about the relationships and, and all that type of stuff you build with your students and you know anyway I had to I had to still live right I had to have a family to support <laughs> so I, I would do weddings and I remember being at this wedding and I was at the order like the table it was cocktail hour and so the cocktail hour there's this guy and I'm like, man, he sure does look familiar. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't want to say anything at the time. So as he's, you know, as he's at the table, you know, grabbing the scrimps, I'm about to grab me some scrimps too. So as his hand goes to the scrimps, I see the ring. So when I saw the ring, it was confirmation for me to say, Mr. Harris, what a pleasure. You know what I'm saying? He was so cool. Like we 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 shared we didn't share the shrimp but we were sharing serving you know the serving of the shrimp like we were we we talked shrimp we talked football and then he complimented me on my music like my singing and playing I was like man I got complimented by a Hall of Fame running back you know what I'm saying so that was that you know it, it was it was by a mistake didn't know he was going to be at this wedding usually I do weddings and I don't know who they're going to be at I remember playing for if you guys know a lineman uh adam levitri uh I, pl I i played i was i played at his wedding didn't know who he was but that was the first time i met taylor luan and if you guys know me i'm a michigan fan and so taylor luan was one of his best uh, groomsmen's or whatever and that was when i met taylor luan so i'll never forget that's a whole nother story but it was it was really a pleasure to meet franco harris uh, at a wedding, just, you know, being a regular person. But that Super Bowl ring, man, God dang. Did they tip well? <laughs> Golly, yes. <laughs> it wasn't his wedding. He was just a guest. I can't even remember who the wedding was for. I do believe it was, like, in the New York area. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, yeah, they definitely tipped well at the wedding. Uh, some weddings don't tip, and it's okay. Uh, I only I care about the experience. But it was really cool to get a compliment from that young gentleman right there. And uh, God rest his soul. Uh, and, and and again, our prayers go out to his family, 100%. All right. So let's keep the show going. Look, some 49ers news. Finally, we got some damn news from the 49ers, right? We got some roster moves. They signed another cornerback, Trey Swilling. Is he the son of Pat Swilling? Just curious. Somebody put that up. And out in the atmosphere, and I didn't double check it, so I feel like I got y'all, y'all the fact checkers. Uh, he may be the son of Pat Swilling, so the 49ers signed another cornerback to the practice squad. I know a lot of everybody's like, Well, what does this mean? Like, is Mooney Ward gonna be okay? Is blah 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 blah, or whatever, or whatnot? Listen, he is the son, thank you, Coach Cruz. Bam, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ah, uh, area underscore graphics. Ah, uh, you do graphics, huh? We, I must link up. For sure. <laughs> uh, she says that she can make a podcast logo, but she likes the words very much. Appreciate you. We'll find a way to connect. All right. Um, but nah, seriously, what's going on, Fernando? I I he he's he's the son. Um rookie, right? Not no stats. So um if you, I, I remember I did look him up in college. Uh it's a pretty good defender. Um what did he, he had a couple of tackles for loss i believe it was like two tackles for loss he even had a sack uh but no interceptions and and we'll see what he does okay we'll see we'll see what he does uh yes he went to georgia tech so that that is something that i definitely wanted to talk about oh ronnie has a question so i'll make sure i star that uh guys don't forget man we do the q a as well <laughs> 
Uh, but yes, he did play with, uh, uh, you know, Jordan P. Mason at Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets. Um, so we'll look, we'll, we'll monitor it. We'll see what happens. Uh, and this does, this does lead to Ronnie's question. So Ronnie asked Breezy, what were your thoughts on how the Jackrabbit played? So I just finished watching the defensive film and I thought he played well, you know, like I, I thought he played very, very, very well. And he came in when he wore, went out with the concussion, Jack rabbit came in, played on the outside. I, I, I thought he played really well, gave up a pass. Um, but I thought overall, I thought he played really decent. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so we'll see, we'll see what, uh, what this kid is going to do. Uh, we do have the injury to Ambry Thomas. Don't really know what his status is. I feel like this is one of those, um, red shirt years for Ambry. He just could not get healthy, man. Like it's unfortunate for Ambry Thomas. Just couldn't find a way to stay healthy. Um, but other news for 49ers, they opened up the practice window for a couple of defensive tackles. Right. And so, uh, we're going to talk about Javon Kinlaw on this episode, so we'll save him. But let's talk about Kalia Davis, right? Sixth round pick, 220th pick last year, uh, 2022 draft was uh, drafted to the 49ers. You saw him at the OTAs, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but he got placed on the NFI list, right? So he wasn't able to perform due to injury that he sustained in college. And so the 40 that's the PUP list of the players before they enter the nfl so if you don't know what the nfi list that's what that is um and uh i'm gonna hold this thought tommy so thank you and we're gonna talk about Khalil davis a little bit because I, i'm excited to see if this kid can get out on the field uh tommy says amory was a full participant at practice i have that coming up next too as well so thank you what's going on larry it's good to see you bro uh thanks for tuning in my guy all right so Khalil davis man uh john lynch the moment they drafted him uh, was simply saying that this was going to be, okay, the 2.0 version of a guy that they could not re-sign. Okay? They could not re-sign. I'm not going to say the guy's name. I'm just going to say he ended up signing to Denver. And they said that he was the 2.0 version of that. Now, the 49ers were pretty much, you know, <laughs> I was going to save that for the end of the show, but you can't be mad. You know what? I'm, I don't want to sidetrack. I want to stay on Kalia Davis. You guys suck out there in the chat. Just want y'all to know that. Y'all suck, but y'all good. Um, look, Kalia Davis is, is the 2.0 version of a young gentleman that went and signed with the Denver Broncos, who I haven't really heard much of his name this year. OK, but he definitely was a fan favorite. I, I didn't, I'm not going to say the name. Y'all can say the name. I'm not going to say the name. And so John Lynch was like super happy. Now, here's the thing I'm going to say, <laughs> my man, Larry, hold it down in the chat, bro. I will not do it right now. Here's what I would say. At what point are we going to start crediting John Lynch and the talent scouting team for finding these these talented players, whether they come in injured or whatnot, they usually pan out. Now, I know we're going to talk about another player who hasn't panned out as of yet. He was a high draft pick. Matter of fact, they had to, they traded away a fan favorite, and they ended up using that pick to actually draft this player. So I get the, I get the discourse there, but I think Khalil Davis is going to be a problem. Here's the only thing. I don't know if he's going to be able to put up in three weeks enough for Kyle Shanahan to be like, yo, I want this kid out there. Now, now, we do need depth at the defensive tackle. I think Hassan Ridgeway is done for the year, right? He's been placed on IR. We won't see him for the re remaining of the season. I, I think he's pretty much done. Can he come back during the playoffs? Possibly. But he has to, you know, sit out the IR for the four weeks, and then there's that three-week window. That's like seven weeks. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But I, I, I tell you what, I think if Khalil Davis wasn't injured, I think he would have went higher in the draft. So I think that they got another steal in the draft in the sixth round and 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 the kid is he's he he plays with a force like that guy's name that i don't want to mention i see cowboy angel putting up his stats he's 6'2 310 pounds for those that don't know kids a problem and here's the thing he could rush the quarterback and that's the one thing i liked about dj damn it that's the one thing i liked about dj jones like he wasn't just a run stuff and defensive tackle 
He was more of the, the move out my way defensive tackle. I'm going to get to the quarterback. And we started seeing some of that stuff from Kevin Givens. He's actually a bigger defensive tackle. So, yeah, he could soak up some of the blocks and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? So this is going to be a good bonus piece. Now, the question is, can Khalil Davis put out enough just during these three weeks? Will it take him three weeks? That's up to him. It's really up to him. I don't even think it's up to the coaches. I think Khalil Davis, go out there, show up, show out. It's going to be a problem. And if the 49ers can get a fresh defensive tackle into the rotation, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Like, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's not justifiable, <laughs> Deontay. You can't call someone 2.0 version of someone, and then the guy ain't showing nothing. Listen, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you what John Lynch said the moment he was drafted. Like, he he's high on this kid. and. Usually John Lynch's picks, man, they kind of stake, they kind of they kind of map out, like especially later, later on in his in his tenure as a general manager. So I tell you what, I'm gonna trust Lynch. And and if it's a bust, who cares? It's a six-round pick. You know what I mean? If it's a bust, six-round pick. Oh well, right, we missed on this one, guys. Let's keep it moving. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? So look, I think Khalil Davis, look, I, I personally he's a really good guy. Yeah. I get to chop it up with him every now and then. We talk, we communicate. Him, I will say this: Kalia Davis and Spencer Burford have been my homies. Uh, you know, shout out to them because they 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 won hundreds. They they won hundreds. I'll keep it like that. So I'm I'm really rooting for the kid. I'm really rooting for the kid, and I think the kid's gonna go out there uh, within these three weeks, and you're gonna see him on the football field. Really do. I believe he's wearing number 90. You guys got the number? Is it 93, 90 something? I can't remember what the number uh, that he was wearing uh, in practice yesterday. But listen, I think he's going to be a problem. I I, I will say that. Uh, and Coach Cruz puts out a very interesting fact. We've had way more success in rounds three through seven than in rounds one through two. All right. Way more success. So let's just keep that up in the air. Like, that's something that did. 93. Thank you, Eddie. Appreciate you, brother. 93, man. Shout out to everybody out there, man. When I, I asked for a question, you guys got the answer boom, boom, boom right away. It makes makes it easier because when you're by yourself, and you're trying to hit buttons and hit buttons and produce and talking and stuff. It just gets, gets a little bit out of hand. Uh, Jedi says, I don't think he's going to play this year. The rookie, he's talking about Kalia Davis. Listen, I I think Kalia Davis may have more of a shot of playing than Javon Kinlaw. I, I, I don't know. I liked what Kyle Shanahan said about Ken Law, but I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on. But we're going to talk about Javon Ken Law because he's the next guy that the windows open. So if you guys don't understand the the the, the three week or the 21 day window, 49ers have three weeks to claim these guys onto their active roster. So let's go ahead and get into the Ken Law news. Uh, you know, because Javon Ken Law also has been uh, you know, not activated to the roster, but he's been cleared to practice. And so, you know, I'm sure you guys saw his his, uh, his interview yesterday by Kate Rooney. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah. So, not going to play it, but it is out there. Uh, I put it up on the YouTube, the Twitter. I even put the, you know, the captions in there. So, if y'all can read what he said. But, you know, you... They, they, it was a simple question because they, they asked him, you know, do you think you're going to be playing on Sunday? And, you know, he, he you just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's going to play. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'll play it for you. I'm not going I'm not going to show it to you, but I'll definitely play it for you. How about that? Uh, sometimes, you know. Me personally, I do. Yeah. Me personally, I do. <laughs> Have you gotten any inkling from the staff? Whether Me staff personally, or... I do. <laughs> Fair enough. So, I mean, he, he feels like he's going to play on Saturday. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, no matter how – they were trying to get something out of him, but it, he just wasn't, like, really telling. You know, it was just more like a, me personally, I do. Me personally, I do. Same monotone talk. I, I'm not even mad at him. I, I, I know a lot of people are like, damn, Ken Law, like – can you give him something different? Nah, then let, let Ken Law be Ken Law. Let the kid be Ken Law. Let the kid, Kyle Shanahan said that I, I feel like Ken Law 
Only thing we got to do is get the pads on him because when he plays, he's a. He, I'm summing up what Shanahan said. When he plays, he's a motherfucking problem on the field. That's the, that's the that's the thing. Now I got my conspiracies around what Kyle Shanahan does with some of these players. And man, just go watch the Ken Law joint because if you look at his his mannerisms, you could tell he's frustrated. But it's not about the injury. So my conspiracy is this, and I know y'all don't like to hear this crap. So my conspiracy is maybe Kyle decided to stash him for now. I like guess it's, it's a possibility because there's there's ways you can get around certain things. Maybe Ken Law's been ready. Maybe Ken Law never wanted to go on the IR, but Kyle's like, listen, I'm going to put you on IR, and then I'm going to, you know, blah, 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 we'll, we'll get you back. We'll get, we'll, we'll get you back in there. That's the energy I got from Ken Law's interview. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, now you want to bring me back. I, I wasn't able to help the team do whatever, whatever, and now you want to prepare. Now, I'm not saying Ken Law wasn't injured. I'm just saying maybe he wasn't as injured and injured reserve worthy. Hey, Ken Law, only you know and the coaches know. I, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Only you guys know. But congratulations to these guys. Uh, the practice squad is opening. And we got to talk about Ken Law a little bit more after we talk about uh, a little bit more 49ers news. Eddie says, Breezy, does activating Davis count as one of the transaction IR trend? Nope. Nope. He was on the NFI. Does not count. They will have to take someone off the active roster, though. So they they he doesn't count as an IR guy. They will have to take someone off the active roster. Uh, the IR, he wasn't on IR. He was on NFI. So it was a different list. So to answer your question, no, he will not count. Uh, he will not count. But again, they will they will have to remove somebody from the roster or it's a possibility that they release somebody from the practice squad and he goes to the practice squad. I, I like there, there's just so many, so many options in the NFL now. It's it's not even funny, but Eddie, I hope that answers your question. So, no. Uh 49er Jeff says, "Do you really think Kyle does that?" I do. I do. I do. Like he he had an over surplus of defensive tackles. Javon Kinlaw wasn't at 100%. You stash you you he could have easily left Kinlaw on the active roster, but he put him on the IR instead. The same way he did Eric Armstead, like there's 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 just so many different, so many ways Kyle could have gone about it. I think that response from Ken Law is more of a beef with Kyle, and he's just more like, yeah, me personally, I feel like it, but it's not up to me. That's what he was saying. Yeah, me me personally, I do, but it but it ain't up to me. Me personally, I do, but it ain't up to me. That like that's. If I, I'm hoping that's what the beat writers. That's what I got from. Yeah, me personally, I do. Like I, I, I think I'm a play. Like I, I, I could, I could do it, but it ain't up to me. That's kind of like what he was saying. I don't know if that's what y'all got, but yeah, that's kind of like what he was saying. Akeem Spence and Ty McGill, T. Y. McGill. Excuse me. Good job, D. D. These are two people that may be at the expense of being released. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see more of T. Y. But Akeem Spence played a lot of snap. Played played a significant amount of snaps yesterday. You know what I'm saying? A significant amount of snaps yesterday. I mean, against Seattle. My bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, listen, I got conspiracies, and it's just crazy. You know, it's just weird um, how certain things kind of like you know map themselves out. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Uh, let's just hope this kid is back. You also heard what Kyle Shanahan said about Debo. If if this and this is what makes me feel like, like I know T Jack, I know the theories, but this is what makes me feel like the theories can possibly be somewhat accurate, right? So they asked him about Debo Samuel. What did he say about Debo Samuel? Do you guys know? He said, uh, you know what? If we needed him, you know, more than likely he would play this week. But since we don't need him, we gonna let him rock. We gonna let him ride out. So I, I'm not saying that they didn't need Kinlaw, but I think they had to make a tough decision between Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw. Which guy are we putting on the IR? Which guy are we gonna keep on the roster? 
I think that's what it came down to. They could have easily put Eric Armstead on the IR and then kept Kinlaw, but but they didn't. So I don't know. They're, they're just It's just some weird inkling things. And, and, and this is what coaches and head coaches do all over across the NFL. It's it's They got rules, and you guys know what defense attorneys are, right? And I feel like head coaches are like the defense attorneys. They, Hey, man, how can we find a way to manipulate this rule? It's a rule, but how can we figure out how to still do what the rule says but still get our way at the same time? You know? And it could be this too, like, it, it could easily be something like this. But my point is, my point is, I don't, the players don't always agree with this junk. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it could be that. It could be that easily. But sometimes the players, like, maybe maybe Debo didn't, I'm not Debo, maybe Kinlaw really didn't feel like he was hurt enough to go on the IR. He wanted to ball out, yo. And, and, and you're asking... You're asking him, this is what, this is, he's, he's, is he going to get his fifth year? Op- so there's a lot at stake here. And Melissa, stop talking trash in the chat. I see what you just said. I'm not trying to throw a bunch of conspiracies out, but think about what I'm saying for a second. 49ers have to make a decision next year, right? Are they going to fifth year option this guy? The 49ers made a a, a, a a decision, a business decision, and decided to stash him for the, the majority of the year which could do everything that y'all saying. It could be protecting them from themselves. Uh, it could give them a little bit longer to see, you know, what they want to do with the player in the long run. It's just politics as usual. Y'all gonna stop talking about my damn Santa hat. This shit is fresh. You heard? You heard? All right, so that's the latest in roster moves. We'll come back, talk a little bit more about uh, Ken Law and what he can do for this team and how he'll help this defense in a second. But let's go ahead and get down to the actual practice report, and then we'll talk a little bit about Nick Bosa. So here's who practiced yesterday and did not practice yesterday. So the did not practice list, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, with the foot injury, who also hasn't been set to IR. Kevin Givens, no IR. These are all active roster spots, guys. Knee injury, Kerry Hyder, ankle injury, wide receiver, uh, Debo Samuel, ankle, knee, Trent Williams, rest day. Here are your limited guys, all right? Defensive lineman, Eric Armstead, foot and ankle. Running back, Christian McCaffrey. Free knee. Uh, it was good to see Tavarius Moore being limited. I never thought I'd say that before, but I did not realize how important he was, mainly for special teams. If you don't believe me, go back and watch the Seattle game. I felt like Seattle started every drive at the 40-yard line on kickoff returns. All right. So just just check that out. Let me know what y'all think about that. All right. So, yeah, like these were was limited. And then we had some full practice guys. Right. I think Mooney Ward was also a limited player uh, yesterday in practice. Uh, he was not a full participant. But you're going to see that kind of like trickle up as the week goes along. Right. Because that's what these guys, you know, it's just kind of how it is. It's the end of the season. You know, you guys talk about they should get extra rest. Look, Trent Williams getting all the rest days he wants. It's like almost going to a job and you just saving your days off for some good old good time, right? So Brock Purdy was limited too. He's dealing with the oblique injury. Cornerback Ambry Thomas was limited. So he wasn't a full participant, but he was at practice. Ankle injury, Mooney, uh, Traverius Mooney Ward with the concussion. Full though was wide receiver Danny Gray who had the hamstring issue and Samuel Womack is back. That's another special teamer. I'm going to tell you right now, Samuel Womack and Traverius Moore must be the gunners on the outside because when those dudes play, there's no kickoff return yards like zero like i love it you know what i'm saying zero kickoff returns so it's so good to have those dudes back um so now special teams should be really pretty much on par uh and let's watch the commanders game i'm hoping that Tavarius Moore uh gets off the limited list and has a couple of full practices before the week is out and then let's talk about nick bosa because nick bosa uh i put out a tweet uh, I think it was yesterday or day before. I can't really remember the day. It's doing really well. Shout out to everybody that that tweets and twits and all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys. Uh, but it's about him getting the sack record. And that's something totally different of what's going on. But currently, uh, word on the street is Nick Bosa passed My- uh, Michael Parsons as the favorite defensive player of the year. And we all feel or felt that this should have been happening anyway. 
right? We all felt that this should be happening. And this is not a shot at Micah, because I, I, I can I can I tell you that I like Micah Parsons? Is that wrong to like Micah Parsons? I don't I hate the Cowboys. I really like Micah Parsons, though. Like I like sometimes you just have favorite players. What's going on, Tanya? Sometimes you just have favorite players. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I, I like Micah, but Bosa, My, Micah doesn't get defended like like Bosa does. And so I'm trying to figure out how the voting goes when they try to figure out who's defensive player of the year. I'm, I'm sure they compare stats. I'm sure they look at the the uh the difficulty of the teams that they play. You know what I'm saying? But you remember when Micah played against the 49ers? Does everybody remember that game? What did he do? Because I can't remember. I, usually I would remember. I like Micah Parsons so good that I, I remember what he does. And this is, again, not a shot. I'm just saying. All I'm saying is when he plays against certain teams, somebody in this chat says he disappears. Name one game Nick Bosa disappeared. Now, there's been a couple of games he didn't have sacks, but dudes being held and 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 double teamed and chipped and all the good stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so this is not a shot at uh, Mike, Micah. This is more like it's about time that the NFL, okay, starts showing Nick Bosa some respect. And it's probably because it's, decl- it's, it's to the decline. Well, I'm not blaming this on Joey, but we're not talking about Joey Bosa anymore, right? He hasn't played this year, injury, whatever. Now it's Nick Bosa's time. So you're starting to see it. Dude has 15 and a half sacks. It, he's breaking records. Uh, he's double teamed every single game. He's still pro- pro- uh, getting the pressures. Like he's making the his other teammates better. Um, this, I don't know what else goes into the factor of he's leading the, the NFL in sacks. I don't know what else goes into the factor of being defensive player of the year, but he's clearly the front runner. He should have been the front runner um, as well. You know what I'm saying? And so we're going to see. We're going to see how this pans out. we got three games left, and I know a lot of people on the tweet, they were like, hey, oh, there it is, Raphael. I was waiting to see. I'm sure a lot of people said it. Like Google account came up here. Micah did nothing. 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 It, 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 he, you know why he got hurt? Shades by Shardell? Because he was able to do, he couldn't do anything. He did get hurt in that game. I remember he was trying to come off, and it was it wasn't even on Trent Williams' side. He tried to line up on the McGlinch, uh, the Tom Compton side. I'm sorry, which is still McGlinchy's side, but McGlinchy wasn't playing. Obviously, he ended up getting hurt in that game. Hey, he was a non-factor. But my point is, he's gonna probably see the 49ers. I. I want the NFC Championship game to be the 49ers and Cowboys. That would bring me back to my roots. I'm talking, that's what I want. I want that to be the NFC Championship. I know that's not going to be the NFC Championship. That's what I want. What's going on, Perk Dog? I got to Perk Dog gets his own sound effect because you dog. (laughs) Yeah, so I I, I would say that. Oh, and then Green Mobster says, Breezy, let's not forget – Bosa missed uh, a game. Yo, he did. Yeah, 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 he did miss a game. And a lot of people are talking about his sacks. They're they're kind of saying like, oh man, you know, the Bosa sack, you know, record. It it, it, should, it's, it doesn't mean it doesn't have the same weight because he there's an extra game. And then people are like, well, he missed a game or two. Like, what are we talking about here? You know what I'm saying? So look. I'm hoping Bosa gets the sack record. I know some people feeling like, hey, man, look, we got the we got the three C lock. Let's just rest these guys. I think the 49ers want to go after that one seed. I, I think we'll, it'll determine. And here's the crazy part. The NFL is so freaking dope for putting all these games we want to see on Saturday. Eagles, Saturday. Niners, Saturday. So it's like the 49ers got to play their damn game, right? And if the Eagles lose, I don't know. You might see some, you might see Bosa go to work. Like, I'm hoping he gets this joint. And it's only because the one seed is possible. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, man, get your faith hats on because the 49ers can finish in first place. I know it's slim to none. There's some things happening in the universe 
for the 49ers to finish strong. And they did, they did, they make this bed that they're in right now. Like they, they could have easily been a different record, right? Think about it. Niners probably should be 13 and one. Just saying. I, the only game I felt like they really lost was the Chiefs game. But I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say that in that sense because the Niners are what their record says they are. But they're definitely trending up. Right. They're definitely moving on up. They're moving forward. They're doing a bunch of things. Now, listen, I got one hundred and fifty people in here right now and it's about that time. OK, Troy, I'm with you. One hundred percent that that's what they should be. Uh, we got one hundred and fifty people in here uh, right now. I'm hoping that Nick Bosa does finish with defensive play of the year. More importantly, the Niners need to win the Super Bowl. I, I that That's the only thing that matters. All right. 150 people in here. It's time to do the Kahoot challenge. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start it. And then I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to do my best to make sure that the screen is is big enough. Now, we're giving away three items. All right. First place, you're going to get a Nick Bosa uh, 2022 Nike jersey. All right. Second place. My neck hurts because I slept wrong. Second place, you're going to get a 97 towel. All right. Game day towel. And then third place, you're going to get a Nick Bosa um, NFL trading card. All right. So I'm giving away three things right now. And I want everybody, if they can, to participate. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen right now. We're going to do this, do that. Boom, boom. Share the screen. Got the Chrome tab up. Game pin is 3614920. Now, I believe I'm limited, so it's like the first 50 people can play. If I could get 50 of y'all in here, that'll be a Christmas present. I'm all about class participation. I used to hate when I do these Kahoot challenges and some of my students just didn't want to participate. I'd be like, y'all going to mess up on free credit? All right, so boom. I tried to make it a little bigger for you guys out there 3614920 is the number all right 3614920 is the number let's go ahead man we got 162 people don't forget to hit that like button number 1 and don't forget to participate in the poll question cuz i didn't watch these answers change wow okay i didn't know they changed like that all right i just happened to take a quick glimpse i cannot type it out i sure can melissa i sure can 361 Four nine two zero. All right. So that's the that's the pen. It's gonna show up on Facebook. It's gonna show up on YouTube. It's gonna show up on uh yeah. It's gonna show up on Twitch. All right. So make sure you guys check that out. All right. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys about you know a couple of seconds now. A little history on the game, man. Look, the Washington. <laughs> I don't know if we could say the word Redskins, but that's 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 what most of us know this team by. Um, they were the Redskins for the longest, and then they recently uh, started going through name changes. Uh, we've played them when they were the Washington football team, and now we're going to be playing them for the first time as the Washington Commanders, all right, as the Washington Commanders. Melissa, thanks for asking for that, um, the pen. I hope, I hope that helps you guys out there, all right? Uh, Melissa's asking, did she get in? Uh, yes, you're in. I see NJ49 Izzy 100%. Boy, 20 Savage, which good. Hold on one second. Let me go ahead and get these prizes. All right. So I promise, look, this is what we're going to win. And I'll do my best to get these prizes out before the holiday. All right. So first place, bam. Come on, camera. 97. Nike. It's got the new font somewhere on here. There it is. It's got the new font up here. Second place. You're going to get that 97 towel so y'all can wipe y'all sweat with it. And then we're going to do a season ticket Nick Bosa card. And this is for Nick Bosa because I think Nick Bosa is going to do some things. Uh, he's going to be a 49er for a very long time, guys. And it's going to be really cool uh, to watch Nick Bosa just continue to grow uh, with the 49ers. You know what I'm saying? Guys, you don't even have to log into Kahoot. 
All right, we got 25 people. I want to see if we can get more than 25. My like uh that would be really cool. Uh so so stay in. All right, we're going to start the game at the 45 minute mark. Now listen, it's only five questions, so I'm not going to overload your brain. All right, it's only five questions, okay? Five questions, all right? Only five. It's almost at that 49-minute mark. Make sure you get in. It may max out at 25. The number is 361. I'll put it in the chat. 361-4920. All right. I got... We got them. All right. Oh, we, it does go over 25. Good. So I, I just wanted to make sure I was paying for it. I, I don't remember seeing it. All right. Can we get to 30? This will be our first 30-burger. We're at 30. I want to start. We're at 30. We're at 31. Oh, bump that. Let's go. Let's get this game going, man. You could always join um, at the start of the question. You guys ready? Here we go. Five questions. All right. They should be pretty damn simple. First three places are going to win a prize. Happy holidays. All right. Question number one. What is Kyle Shanahan's record against the Washington franchise? Now, remember, I said we done played the Redskins, Washington football team, and command well we didn't play the commanders yet but we're on our way to play the commanders that's why i use the word franchise on three two and one one and two three and oh jedi says i'm gonna win <laughs> we shall see jedi we shall see now remember you want to get these correct as well as on time like you want to be the fast he's one and two all right so yeah man he lost in 2017 he won in 2019 then he lost again in 2020 um yeah it was it was tough 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 stint for kyle shanahan so we're looking to see if kyle shanahan could get to 500 uh against the washington franchise all right so here's our top five sucrim uh coach cruz number two skids uh, yeah, I like that name. Skids doesn't mean you got. Never mind. Uh, Gwind or Gwind, and then Dennis D. Some new names. Uh, names I'm not too familiar with. But who the hell cares? Where did the 49ers play uh, the Washington Football Team in 2020? Was it at Levi Stadium, FedEx Stadium, State Farm Stadium? Or the game was forfeited. What do you guys think? Who you guys are, man. Ooh. Who's that guy in the picture, man? Looks like he about to get he did something bad. Look like he threw an interception. Uh the game was State Farms Stadium. It was the Arizona Cardinals Stadium? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Wait a minute. Why you don't like the games? Why is it lame? My bad, yo. Hey, I just want to have some fun, man. Give away some cool stuff. All right. So it was at it was at State Farm Stadium. It was the Arizona Stadium. Remember that year 49ers had to play their home games in Arizona? All right. So yeah. Uh let's see who got that right, though. <laughs> uh, but look, cool. The cool thing is five of you got it right. So five of you are on your stuff. It ain't my fault. Y'all know the answers. And the top five is switching. All right, so Coach Cruz is in first, Skid second, Sucrum, Ice, Gwind, or Gwind. I, I, you got you to gotta correct me. All right, number three, true or false? This is double points. All right, so even if you got the first two wrong, you can get double points. The 49ers lead the series 21-12. to 12. That means they have 21 wins and 12 losses against this franchise in this series. True or false? Look, it's fitty fitty. It's fitty fitty. True or false? Ooh, we got a lot of people playing today. We got over 35 people. That's what I'm talking about. One day we're going to have 50 people playing this joint. I promise you. The answer was true. A lot of you got it right. Congratulations uh, if you got that right. Let's see what the score is. Dad, and it's going to be cool. All right, here we go. Let me, let me calm down. Coach Cruz, Sucrum, Skids, Ice, Irk, Irk, or is it Eric? I don't see an I or a Y. I'm just going to go with Irk. All right, we got our top five. Got two more questions to go. How many times uh, did the four? I meant to say, how many times did the 49ers and the Washington team uh, tie? Is it zero? How many ties are between the two franchises? Is the question. What happens when you make this thing at 11 o'clock at night? Zero, one, two, or three? 
zero one two or three zero one two or three Dang, Christy, you congratulating Coach Cruz already? He, it ain't over yet. Oh, you was congratulating him getting that one, right? Okay. I don't know. It was one time. It was back in the 1960s, guys. It was one time uh, they've actually tied, and it was back in the 1960s. But 18 people got that right, okay? And that's what I'm talking about. So the majority of you got it right, and that's the only thing that matters. All right. Coach Cruz is in first, but it's a close second. And the third is there. If Coach Cruz could get this wrong, Sukram, you could bump, and you get it right, you bump up into first place. Doesn't it feel like the standings for the NFC right now? You know, team loses, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. All right, maybe I'm just talking too much. All right, here we go. Last questions, not double points. In, in 2019, who led the team in receiving against the Washington football team? All right, so in 2019, who led the receiving in, against the Washington football team? All right. All right, who led and received? Was it George Kittle, Kendrick Bourne, Richie James, Ross Dwelly? Yes, Ross Dwelly was there. All right. You can't call him. No, never mind. I'm not, I can't. Some of these things I can't repeat on, on that international TV called YouTube. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> Y'all ain't right. It was Kendrick Bourne. You guys were right, man. Uh, 12 of you got that right. A lot of you thought it was George Kittle. Rich James, I believe, had more yards than George Kittle in this game. So uh, good job, man. And let's see who the top three. Remember, top three, you're getting something. You're walking away with something today. All right, here we go. Third place for the Nick Bosa car. Kali, let's go. Came out of nowhere. Superman, second place, gets the towel and the, the jersey. Goes to Coach Cruz. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I like that. That was pretty cool, man. That was that was pretty cool, pretty spot on. And listen, guys, thank y'all so much for participating uh, in the Kahoot Challenge, man. I appreciate you. Um, I try to put those things together and just have fun. I remember the first time I did a couple, they were like 10 questions and the questions were so hard. A lot of people were complaining, but see, that's the cool thing. I listen to the constructive criticism. See, I'm not scared of it. I listen to it. I might not like it all, but I do listen to it and, and I, I put it to work. Uh, but I do want to wish you guys a happy holidays. Listen, tomorrow we're going to be previewing the show. Uh, John Chapman should be on here. There's going to be two John and Wayne shows tomorrow. So it'll be one with me at 11 a.m. and then one with him at 3 uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on tomorrow. So you guys are going to get a double dose of the John and Wayne show tomorrow. So, guys, listen, I love y'all. Did I miss anything? Did I miss any questions? I got like eight minutes left. So if you guys got some questions, Put your questions out there. I'll do my best to answer. As far as the 49ers playing this team, this should be a really good game. Uh, you look, you got top two, top five defenses. You got the number one defense, the number four defense. As far as total yards that they're giving up per game, uh, Washington is good against the run. The 49ers are great against the run. This is going to be a really good game. All right, really good game. And I see that right there, bro. And I'm going to get to the poll question. Uh, thank you, Martin, uh, for, for the reminder. So let's go ahead and get that going right now. All right. So the question is, what game will Ken Law return? Hmm. Mm. 34%. Oh, man, this was close. So the choices were, uh, let me read them in order. Commanders, Steers, Cardinals, playoffs. 34% of you said the Raiders game. So you think that Ken Law is going to return on New Year's Day. I like it. Uh, I like it. I definitely, that would have been the game that I picked as well. I'm not mad at everybody that picked the Cardinals or the playoffs. Like, it's possible that they can just go ahead and rest them to the playoffs. Chrissy Marie says, when is Madden? Uh, Madden is going to be Friday after Fridays, Friday early. Let me, I got to check because I got a show Friday. So I got to figure out what time my show is. You know, it's going to be Friday early afternoon. So probably like around 3 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I could run to my show. So yeah, Friday won't be on Saturday. I should do a Saturday morning, but y'all ain't waking up Saturday morning. So yeah. So Christy Marie is definitely going to be uh Friday. Uh, Eric Beat says, going to my first Niners game week 18 from NY. So you're going all the way out to California. You're going to go watch them play the Arizona Cardinals. 
Cardinals. Now, I don't know if that game is going to be on a Saturday or a Sunday. I don't think they – I think it's still to be determined, bro. So make sure, you know, you, you, you're ready to go Saturday if it's a Saturday. You know what I'm saying? You know how they do those Saturday games in the NFL. Uh, Melissa says, Breezy, does Ross Dwelly get bumped for roster moves? Nah. Nah. Ross Dwelly is your backup fullback. <clears throat> I don't think he gets bumped. Um – He's 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 a good guy. He's a good player to have on the team, and uh, he's kind of like a guy you need in, in case of emergency. So I, I I don't think he gets bumped at all. Uh, but that's a great question. It's a great question. What other questions did I miss? Let me see. Let me scroll back up. I do see we have a super chat contribution, and we're gonna get to that. Um, do 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 do. We got the Madden question. Uh, is Ken Law playing? Uh, I don't think he's gonna play Sunday. I mean, I mean Saturday. He says he wants to though. He says he says he wants to play. You know, I, but I don't I don't think he plays. Melissa had another question saying, uh, does Lenore get another interception Saturday to make up for that lost one? I hope so. I, I don't think Tyler Heineke is, is good, period. I, you know what? I feel like Tyler Heineke is Geno Smith. They're like the same guy. They could scramble for a run and, you know, they can make some throws, but they're like in the same week. The 49ers just can't get caught off guard. That's that's one thing that they can't do. KD23 says, would you rather have <laughs> would you rather have CMC and Mitchell or CMC and Debo for the CMC and Debo? Like I want the weapons. I the fuck I just I want the, I want, the, I, want the, I want the weapons. Yeah, I want the weapons. I love Mitchell. Look, it's my guy. Picture right there. I love him. I, but you know, he could rest up, get healed up, come back healthy next year. I want I want the weapons. Yeah, I, I definitely want the weapons. Again, Madness simulation to be tomorrow. Uh, I would say early afternoon. We, my son and I, have a haircut appointment after the Wayne Breezy show. We should be done by two, three ish, and then we'll come. I'll come home and bam, bam, bam. We'll get the Madden going. Uh, just make sure you guys keep me updated with all the injury things, so I can go ahead and 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 do those out. Thoughts on Danny Gray? Ah, hoo, hoo, hoo. look, Danny Gray, uh, he's he's a, he's going to be he's going to be a wide receiver that's going to come around at some point in his career. Right. And so you got to figure like, what is Kyle Shanahan? Most of the wide receivers don't get it year one. They don't get it year two. And then year three, they're like, oh, snap. Like Brandon Ayuk. It's like Brandon Ayuk to me was getting it year one, like his first year, but it was more because they had nobody else to throw to. And I think the way Kyle wanted to use him, Brandon just wasn't getting it. And now year like that was year two, right? And in year three, yeah, he's the best wide receiver on the team. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty cool. Um uh 49er Jeff got a couple more questions. Uh, do the do the defense finish? in place this season do the did they finish in first place is what you're asking i mean they're in first place now so i don't see i mean honestly ask yourself is Derek carr to me Derek carr and Devontae adams are the biggest receiving threats and who's their number two i i felt like if we were able to tame miami we're gucci does that make sense I mean, Derek Carr might be a slight better than Tua, but they don't have nearly the same amount of weapons. I don't think Darren Waller is healthy. I don't think Renfro is healthy. And it's just going to come down to Adams. Now, Adams will eat 100%. Adams will eat. B underscore 49ers 85 says, should we rest starters since we already in? Uh, no. I mean, no. Because you have the opportunity to get the second seed and get more home games. So ask, ask yourself that question. Do you guys want to play at home? If you want to play at home, you can't rest your starters. I'm going to leave it at that. That's how I answer that question. Uh, Ronnie says, uh, oh, Fernando says, going to have to travel back-to-back -back West Coast Breezy. Yep, for sure. Uh, Oakland to, yeah, let me back home. Um, and then the playoffs, I guess. Will Trent Williams get a tutty? And... I'm hoping it's the game, Ronnie. Look, that was my season prediction that Trent Williams would get a touchdown. Right now, I just want Trent Williams to be healthy. Um, I don't know if the creativity I, – I, I, I don't know if the creativity is there for Trent Williams. That might have been all Mike McDaniels, bro. That, that might have been all Mike McDaniels. Uh, Jerome Davis says, uh, can we feed Mason like a fat kid at least 10 carries? Listen – 
let me explain this to y'all for the very last time. And I promise we'll end on the this and then a couple of contributions. Let me explain this to you. Jordan Mason is the closer. <laughs> Leave him as the closer. That boy rushed a, ran a 55-yard run after two stuffed runs. So it was a run up the middle, didn't get much. Uh, a run to the side, didn't get much. And then back up the middle for 55 yards and got to the one-yard line. Let that man close the games out. I'm cool. Let him close the games out. Just let him continue to be the closer. Listen, I don't know what CMC is doing, but he's definitely figuring out ways to stay healthy. And so you guys got to give him, like, some credit. Like, I because they're, they're definitely overutilized. They're, they're not even overutilizing him, but it just seems like he's running up the middle a lot. But then he broke one up the middle. Uh, remember that play we ran, rushed for like 20-something plus yards? Did you see the blocking on that? Oh, my gosh. It was like you. they had George Kittle and Kyle Juszczyk on the right. And and yet everybody thought it was about to be this crazy play. And boom, they sealed off the right. He cuts to the right and cuts back to the left. And, I mean, he just had to beat the linebacker and the safety. Well, that would have been a touchdown. But, listen, you, you just got to let him – you just gotta let him be him, man. I feel like he's he's doing pretty damn good out there. Uh, and 49er Jeff, yeah, I do think that the 49ers defense will finish first. Kevin says, does Kalia Davis see time this year? It's so it's like so slim to none, but I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping for it. Like, you know what I mean? All right, let's get to these contributions. I appreciate all the QA. I like QA. I don't know why I don't stick to that. I I feel like I don't stick to that for some strange reason. All right, Chrissy, Super Chat Contribution. Thank you so much. I got to get you to fall horn. She says, Merry Christmas, Breezy. Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. Hope you guys have a safe and blessed holiday. Uh, and, and please spend time with the family. Watch some basketball. Uh, do, do whatever it is you guys love to do on Christmas, all right? Please, 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 please. Marty Marr, my guy. Happy holidays, my brother. Happy holidays to you. Listen, please check your local mail. Because I sent you a, a gift, right? And it was it was a pen, but I didn't realize that I had to put it in a specialty envelope. So it's probably going to be at your local mail place, and they're going to ask you for the postage. Just send me the bill, and I'll give you the, the postage money. All right? So I appreciate you, bro. Congratulations. And then last but not least, Christy. She says, Merry Christmas, Breezy, and the faithful family. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. I, I got to ask you this before we go, and I'm sure I'll ask you again, but what's on your menu? You don't got to tell us now, but I want to know because your Thanksgiving menu was off the chain. I'm just curious to know what do you do for the Christmas menu? Let's talk about it tomorrow, and we can try to compare and contrast. All right, Christy? Uh, love you so much, Christy Marie. Thank you so much for the contributions. Everybody out there, it's been a real show, man. Thank y'all for participating in the Kahoot Challenge on Wine Back Wednesday. Shout out to Peachy for putting all the stuff out there on social media. Peachy is the king of the queens out there holding that stuff down for your boy Breezy. Love you so much. I know she couldn't be here in the chat today. Work work calls. Work calls. You got to do work calls, right? But Peachy's always behind the scenes doing a lot. Miss Debbie as well. And everybody else that's helping out this brand. Mariah, I love you. Uh, can't wait to chop it up with you. Uh, we're going to get together, hopefully, during these holidays and do some more content creating. Uh, if you guys don't know who Mariah is, check out the 49 of Faithfully podcast with Mariah, my brother, Taryn. They are tearing it up. You heard? All right. And everybody else that's a content creator out there, keep grinding. Listen, dreams do come true. I'm living in the dream and it's coming. It's continually coming true as we speak. So dreams do come true, guys. Don't give up on your dream. If this is what you love to do, do it. All right. But make sure if you're married, you check with your spouse and tell them Breezy, Breezy said, do it. Nah, don't get me in trouble. Nah, it's not what's going to happen. Love you guys, man. Stay up, stay faithful, man. And happy holidays. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. Oh, snap. I forgot to use this whole episode. Shout out to my brother Steve for the Christmas overlay. It'll be on and popping tomorrow tomorrow for sure. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching. Peace.